up guys, it's Fidget here with your Statifying Football. This is your week 7 NFL preview and picks. Let's jump right into it. Thursday, Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Denver Broncos. Kansas City's coming off their second loss, 31-24 loss to Houston. Patrick Mahomes, 273 through touchdowns and a pick. They only ran for 53 yards. Um, they had two turnovers. Their defense did force two turnovers, but they had 11 penalties. And one of the main reasons they lost is they only had 20 minutes of, of time, um, possession. Uh, Houston held the ball for about 39 minutes and kept it away from that potent offense. And they couldn't keep uh, Houston out of the end zone either. Denver's coming off a shutout, their second win in a row, 16-0 win over Tennessee. They had eight sacks in the game and forced three turnovers and were able to get that shutout. This will be an interesting, it's classic offense versus defense. Um, I'm going to give the edge to KC here because their their offense is okay, but even though their defense should be able to might be able to slow down Kansas City. Kansas City should still pull up, put up a little bit more points than Denver. So I'm going to go KC there. All right, jumping to the Sunday games. The Rams and Atlanta Falcons. This will be a shoot. This should be a shootout. The Rams lost 20 to 7 to San Francisco. Goff, it was like it was their worst game under Sean McVay. Goff only 78 passing yards. They only had 157 total yards. Their defense forced two turnovers, but it wasn't enough for them to to win. Whereas Atlanta lost the shootout to Arizona 34-33 on a missed extra point. They tied the game late, late, or they scored a touchdown late, and the extra point that would have tied it, Matt Bryant missed it, and he lost from there. Matt Ryan, awesome game, no 30 of 36, 356, four touchdowns. They had two guys go over 100 yards receiving. Austin Hooper, eight catches, 117 in a touchdown. Julio Jones, eight catches, 108. They only outgained Arizona by two yards in that loss. I expect this to be a shootout. Um, I don't know what to think about. I mean, the, the Falcons, they've been able to move the ball and put up points, but they can't really stop anybody. And the Rams, the last few games, uh, I mean, next, the prior to the Niners, they've been able to put up some points. They put up 40 and they put up 29, but they were giving up a whole lot. Um, I don't know what, to, this is going to be a tough one because the Rams have to travel all the way from L.A. to Atlanta. Usually those cross-country country trips are, are tough for teams. Um... But it's hard. The Rams have lost three in a row. It's hard to see them losing four in a row. I'll give the edge to the Rams uh, there. Uh, the Dolphins and the Bills. The Dolphins are coming off a 17-16 loss to Washington. They were terrible. Josh Rosen, he sucks. 85 passing yards, two picks. Ryan Fitzpatrick, 132 passing and touchdown. They had two turnovers. Whereas Buffalo, they're coming off a bye, but the last game was a hard-fought 14-7 win over Tennessee. Josh Allen, he was fine. 219, two touchdowns and a pick. Added 27 rushing yards. The defense had five sacks, and Jordan Phillips had three of them. They got lucky in that game, though. Tennessee kicker missed four field goals, or else it could have been a much different game. I'll go the Bills here just because their defense is really, really good, and the Dolphins are not good at all. Uh, Jacksonville Jaguars taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. Jaguars have a really good defense. They only lost 13 to 6 to uh, New Orleans Saints. They're able to hold that offense down. Even with Teddy Bridgewater, they, water, they put it, the Saints have been putting up a lot of points and yards. Jacksonville only held them at 13, but they could only score six themselves. Gardner Minshew, he had his worst game so far, 14 to 29, went 63 in a pick. The defense did have three sacks in that game. Cincinnati lost 23-17 to Baltimore. Andy Dalton, 21 to 39, 235. He threw, threw an interception. They only had 33 rush yards. They only had 250 total yards. And the defense allowed almost 500 yards to Baltimore, 497 to be exact. Um, Jacksonville, their offense, before this game, they, they've shown they can move it with Minshew, and they do have one of the better defenses in the league. The Bengals have been, like, close in a whole bunch of games so far. Um, it's hard to see the Bengals going over 0-7, but I, I'm going to go Jacksonville in this one. I think it, it will probably be a pretty close game, just because the Bengals usually play close. All right, a really good NFC North matchup, the Vikings and the Lions. The Vikings coming off a 38-20 win over Philadelphia. Kirk Cousins. 22 of 29, 333, four touchdowns and a pick. They ran for 122. Stephon Dix had seven catches, 167 yards, and three touchdown receptions. They put up 447 yards of offense. Their defense did force three turnovers as well. Whereas Detroit lost and a nail biter, and a, frankly, probably shouldn't have lost. Ter two terrible calls on Trey Flowers, illegal hands to his face, fucking horrible. Um, those refs need to be fired. But anyway, Detroit lost 23-22 to Green Bay. They only had 56 rushing yards. However, they, they 
they Detroit had their chances to put them away. They had three turnovers and could only get field goals out of them. So they could have piled on some more. Kenny Galladay had a really good game. Five catches, 121. This Minnesota's def Minnesota's offense the past couple of weeks, they've been able to move it. Dalvin Cook can still run, but they, they've been passing a lot better. They're much more balanced offense. Detroit, can they can usually move the ball pretty well. I'm going to go Vikings here because I think the Vikings defense is still pretty good. All right, Oakland and Green Bay. Oakland's coming off a bye. Their last game was a win against Chicago in London, 24-21. That was a weird game. Uh, they are up 17-0, then they went down 21-17, then they uh, scored late to win, 24-21. Josh Jacobs had his best game so far as a rookie, 123 rushing and two touchdowns. Um, they had 169 rushing yards. They did turn over twice, but the defense had four sacks, two turnovers, and only had 236 yards. Green Bay had a come from behind win against Detroit on Monday Night Football, 23-22. Aaron Rodgers, 283, two touchdowns and a pick. Jamal Williams ran for 104. They had 170 rushing yards and 447 total yards, but they turned it over three times. And the defense did have three sacks. So uh, Oakland's been showing they, they both have, are pretty tough. Both have shown they can move the ball reasonably well. I expect this to be relatively high-scoring game, I, I think, anyway. But it's in Green Bay, so I'll, I'll go. And I can't go against Aaron Rodgers. I'll go Green Bay here. All right, the Houston Texans and the Colts, an interesting ASC matchup there. Houston, they're coming off a 31-24 win over Kansas City. Deshaun Watson, 280 passing, one touchdown, but he did throw two interceptions. However, he also added 42 rushing yards and two touchdowns on the ground. Carlos Hyde ran for 116 in a touchdown. They ran for 192 yards as a team, but they did turn over three times, so they got to uh, cut that down. They had a time of possession of 39 minutes, which is how they were able to beat Kansas City. The defense forced two turnovers, and they got their first interception off Patrick Mahomes this year. Whereas Indianapolis, they're coming off a bye, and coincidentally, their last game was against Kansas City, which they beat them 19-13. Marlon Mack also gained 132 rushing yards. They ran for 180 as a team. They also had the ball for 37 minutes, which is another way how they beat uh, the Chiefs. And they had uh, four sacks in that game. It, both defenses are, 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 Indianapolis is a pretty good defense. They're more of a ball control offense. Brissett, Jacoby Brissett can put up some yards and stuff. They got T.Y. Hilton still. They got some good guys. Marlon Mack, clearly he can run it. Uh, but this is this is kind of tough. I, I expect Indy to keep it close, but I, I'll go with Houston to edge them out uh, in the end. Uh, the Cardinals and the Giants. Uh, Arizona, they come on with a shootout 34-33 win over Atlanta. Atlanta missed an extra point at the, to, that would have tied it. Kyler Murray had an awesome game, 340 passing, three touchdown passes, and 32 rushing yards. They had 442 yards as a team. Uh, Kyler Murray has an NFL record in all six games so far this year. He's completed at least 20 passes. He's the first player to start his first six, six games of his career with at least 20 completions in each of them. The Giants coming off a 35-14 loss to New England. Daniel Jones, not a, very, not a good game at all. 15 of 31, 161, one touchdown, three interceptions. Golden Tate was pretty much their highlight. Six catches, 102 and a touchdown. And they only had 213 yards of offense. They forced four turnovers. They had four turnovers, I mean. Um, their defense had three sacks and did force two turnovers of, of the Patriots. I'm going to go with the Cardinals here. I think the Cardinals, they're on a two-game win streak. And even before that, they, they were able to show they can put up points and yards and be, at least be a threat, be competitive. The Giants, they've been kind of in and out. The Joe, this will be an interesting matchup. This could be... You know, uh, uh, a matchup of two future stars in the league, both rookie quarterbacks, Kyler Murray for the Cardinals and, Dan and uh, Daniel Jones for the Giants. I'm going to go Arizona here. All right, the Niners and Washington Redskins. Niners had a hard-fought win against the Rams, 20-7. to um, Garoppolo, he's okay, 243 and a pick. George Kittle, eight catches, 103. They had two turnovers, but their defense, is, they shut down the Rams. They had four sacks. They only held them 157 total yards. The Washington got their first one of the year, 17-16 over Miami. Case Keenum was solid, 166 and two passing touchdowns. Adrian Peterson, the Angels one, had a good game, 118 rushing. Uh, Terry McLaurin, four catches, 100 yards, and two touchdowns. The defense didn't have five sacks in four, two turnovers. I'm going to go the Niners here. The Niners look really, really good this year on, on both sides, offense and defense. Chargers and the Titans. This could be pretty... Big for I know it's early. It's only they're both two and four, but if you know if teams want a, a, a shot at a wild card, this could be one of those games where maybe at the end of the year this it comes down to this kind of thing. The Chargers they lost on uh, 
Sunday night football, 24-17 to the Steelers. They were actually down 24 nothing at the beginning of the fourth quarter and almost came back. Rivers, 320 passing, two touchdowns, two picks. Hunter Henry, eight catches, 100 yards, and two touchdowns. They only had 32 rushing yards in the game. A lot of that was because they were behind and had to pass to catch up. They did have three turnovers, which didn't help them. Tennessee lost 16 nothing in Denver. Marietta, 7 of 18, 63 yards, and two interceptions. And the, uh, the other quarterback came in, Tannehill, had threw an interception as well. He only had 204 yard total yards and those three turnovers. I'm going to go to the Chargers here. At least the Chargers have looked pretty good on offense and showed them they can enable a, a, a... Rivers is a good play. All right, the Saints and the Bears. Another another possible, you know, big one for possible playoff berths. Saints are 5-1. and one, The Bears are 3-2. and two. Saints coming off a, a low-scoring 13-6 win over Jacksonville. Teddy Bridgewater, Bridgewater passed for 242 touchdowns. Defense held Jacksonville only 226 total yards. Chicago's coming off a bye, but their last game was a 24-20 win loss to Oakland. They were down 17-0. They went up 21-17 and then lost. Chase Daniel filling in for Mitch Trubisky was fine. 231, two touchdowns with two picks. Um, they only ran for 46 yards. They only had 236 yards in that, that game. Chicago's defense is really good, much like Jacksonville was able to hold down New Orleans. Um, Chase Daniel, he's shown that he can go in. I'm not sure if Trubisky is healthy or not. This is this is kind of a tough one because I, I don't think it really matters who the Bears quarterback is because I, I think they're both capable. It's really, can the Bears defense hold the Saints? Um, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to go Bears here. All right, the Ravens and the Seahawks, awesome game here. Awesome. Possible preview of a Super Bowl here. Um, Baltimore coming off a 23-7 to Cincinnati, 23-17 win over Cincinnati. Lamar Jackson won all Lamar Jackson, 236 passing, 152 rushing and touchdown. They ran for 269 yards as a team. They put up 497 yards. The defense only held uh, Cincinnati to 250 yards. They did have 10 penalties, so they're really going to need to cut that back uh, against Seattle. Seattle had a 32-28 win over Cleveland. They were down 20-6 at one point and came back. Russell Wilson still hasn't thrown any interception this year. He passed for 295, two touchdowns. Chris Carson ran for 124 and a touchdown. They had, they had 454 yards of offense. Defense forced four turnovers, but they did give up 406 yards. And Baltimore is actually the number one total offense in the league right now. Both teams are like in the top five or seven or something of scoring offenses. I expect this to be a bit of a shootout. Both defenses are kind of in the middle. This will be a shootout. Baltimore has to travel all the way to Seattle. Oh, man, this is a tough one. Russell Russell wasn't good, but Lamar Jackson could go off, you know, and, and that would be tough for Cincinnati, for uh, Seattle. I'm going to go Ravens here. I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go Ravens with that one. That That's a not going to be a great game. All right, the Eagles and Cowboys. This is for who, for the lead in the uh, NFC East. Yeah, in, NFC yeah East. Um, the Eagles coming off, both coming off losses. Eagles lost 3 to 20 in Minnesota. Carson Wentz 3 with 6 passing, 2 touchdowns a pick. They had 400 yards of offense, but they turned it over 3 times. Their defense forced two turnovers, but gave up 447 yards. Dallas lost 24 to 22 to the Jets. They were down 21 3 and then almost came back. Dak Prescott 277 passing and a rushing touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott ran for 105 and a touchdown. They did put up 398 yards of offense. Um, I, I expect this to be pretty pretty even, but I'm going to go with Dallas here in, in the end. And then the Monday night game, the Patriots and the Jets. Patriots beat the Giants 35-14, Brady 3-34, but he did throw an interception. However, he ran for two touchdowns. Julian Edelman, nine catches, 113. Uh, their defense had four turnovers, a fumble return for a touchdown, and blocked a punt for a touchdown. Whereas the Jets, they actually, with Sam Darnold back in his first game back since week one when he was out with mononucleosis, they beat... Uh, the Cowboys 24-22, Sam Darnold 338, two touchdowns a pick. Robbie Anderson five catches, 125, and a touchdown. And one of them was a 92-yard touchdown pass. I think with the, with Darnold back, they keep it a little closer than normal. But the Patriots are Patriots have the best defense in the league. Like, I mean, statistically, number one in total defense, and uh, number one in scoring defense, and like number one in pass defense or something like that. Uh, and and I mean, they got Brady, so I'm gonna go Patriots here. All right, so there's my NFL reviews and picks and previews, whatever all that sh crap is. Uh, like, subscribe, check out all my other videos. Peace.
lost all hope in Wake up, try to find my focus Me someone new, but the walls ain't broken It's a never ending circle I'm in Time's slow when you're on your own And miss seeing that name on your phone And phone rings, not you, heart's low, man Why you gotta switch up the plan?